Pontiac Fiero, North America's only mid-engine two-passenger production car. One of the ten best cars of 1984, says Car and Driver magazine. Fiero, fuel-injected, economical, and only from Pontiac. Pontiac builds excitement. Welcome to Bladed Tech Musings. I'm your host, Bladed Tech. Vintage tech isn't just about Apple II computers, the HP 35 calculator, or the Apollo 11 moon landing. It's about carts and trucks too, which is why I'm working on this 1996 Jeep Cherokee XJ, the subject of a set of future episodes. This XJ was designed in 1984, the same year another innovative car design was finalized, the Pontiac Fiero Sports Coupe. Unfortunately, the Fiero only ended up being produced for five years, far less than the 13-year run of the XJA. But despite this short run, the mid-engine Fiero became prized by a set of enthusiasts not usually interested in low-cost 80 sports coupes. Supercar enthusiasts who couldn't afford the real thing noticed that the Fiero was the perfect car to be reskinned in the image of whatever exotic was desired, and thus was launched the Fiero kit car craze of the 1990s. It was one of these kit cars that YouTube do-it-yourself vehicle wrencher Tavarish of the Fast and Furious Lambo fame recently bought for $300 on a Lark. Let's take a look at the Pontiac Fiero and see why it was the kit car source vehicle of choice at the end of the 20th century and still is in 2019. In the early 1980s, Pontiac was ostensibly GM's performance division, the Chevrolet Corvette notwithstanding. To this end, Pontiac was selling rebadged and edgier versions of Chevrolet's products, such as the 6000, the Bonneville, the Grand Prix, the Parisienne, and the 2000 Sunbird. But arguably, none of these blocky sedans really carried the performance banner that Pontiac aspired to. Pontiac did sell the Firebird, but the gloss of that model was mostly stolen by the Chevrolet Camaro. Fuel efficiency was also of increasing importance in the face of unrelenting Japanese competition, and Pontiac's lineup wasn't overly fuel efficient. Pontiac engineers wanted more fuel efficiency, but Pontiac marketing people wanted more performance. As it turned out, however, both groups could be satisfied by a clever, but not overly difficult, implementation of contemporary automotive technology. That implementation was a lighter, aerodynamic, fuel-sipping mid-engine design. Pontiac turned to one of its experienced engineers, Hulky Aldekochti, to make it happen. Aldekochti imagined a revolutionary aluminum block with a swept supercar exterior. This left Chevrolet executives aghast at the possibility of a superior competitor to the Corvette, and Pontiac accountants aghast at the potential damage to its miserly budgets allocated to it by GM. This meant that Aldekochti was forced to accept an already available iron block L4 for the engine, stayed practical lines for the exterior, and an overly utilitarian interior, even compared to the utilitarian domestic automotive standards of the 1980s. Nevertheless, the 1984 introduction of the plastic bodied Fiero was an unqualified success, as demand was well in excess of the supply that Pontiac could manufacture. This continued into the 1985 and 1986 model years, but demand started to fade in 1987 as the car had only received minor improvements to the engine and styling. 
Pontiac belatedly applied a significant refresh to the Fiero for the 1988 model year, but the truth was that the car's powertrain had been considered obsolete at the start of the model's run, a situation that became increasingly worse as the automotive industry started making true progress in performance and fuel economy for the first time in the post-emission control era. Thus, with sales by the end of 1988 at only a quarter of the 1986 peak, GM pulled the plug on the Fiero. So, what does the humble Fiero have to do with kit cars or Lamborghini knockoffs? Indeed, in normal circumstances, the Fiero would have been an affordable mid-engine sports car footnote in automobile history. Much like the Toyota MR2, the Fiat X19, and the Porsche 914. However, unlike these three other mid-engine examples, the Pontiac Fiero featured a drivable chassis. Modern cars often feature something called unibody construction, where the chassis, underbody, and body panels are stamped and welded together into a stiff structure ready for the powertrain. If the underbody or body panels are not attached, even if a powertrain is installed, you can't drive it. Older cars or modern trucks feature a more traditional body-on-frame construction, where a stiff rectangular frame is built as a separate piece. The frame is then laid onto the powertrain, and the body of the vehicle is fabricated separately and bolted to the top of the frame. Fiero construction was different. An entire chassis, consisting of elements from both a unibody and a frame, was welded together as a single piece, within which the powertrain and interior was installed. This fully functional chassis could be driven around without the body panels, which in fact Pontiac did inside the factory during testing. Thus, the body panels were not structurally necessary and acted as a mere skin. It didn't take long for kit car manufacturers to realize that it was a simple matter to unbolt the plastic panels and bolt on new panels that reskinned the Fiero to appear from the outside as any car you desired. It was this sort of conversion that Tavarish bought for his channel. After removing most of the wrecked fake Lambo body from the Fiero chassis, it was a simple matter to get in the chassis and drive around the parking lot. The chassis, although it was missing the upper portion of the cabin frame, could be repurposed again for another kit car project designed for the wheelbase of the Fiero. While we are discussing imitation Lamborghinis, and the Fiero's place in that market, we should go over the differences between a kit car and a replica car. The kit car is a refurbishment package that requires a donor car, like the Fiero, to provide the underlying chassis and powertrain to work. The kit merely provides a new body to bolt onto the donor chassis. Most kits require extensive fabrication to adopt the body to the chassis and usually do not include an interior, leaving the builder to either adapt the original donor car interior or to fabricate an entirely new interior in the donor chassis cabin. The replica car is a ground-up build that replicates the exterior and interior to exact dimensions. The chassis is usually fabricated new. A donor car powertrain could be used instead of assembling a new powertrain out of a crate motor, aftermarket transmission, and aftermarket axles, although either option is viable given that the replica is not intended to use a real Lamborghini powertrain. Then a replica body is fitted onto the custom chassis, giving the car the same outward appearance as the real thing. The essential difference between the kit car and the replica car is whether the car is dimensionally accurate or even optically accurate. Kit cars have to conform to the wheelbase and chassis of the donor car it is designed for, which is usually not similar to the real Lamborghini it is intended to imitate. Replica cars eliminate this problem by fabricating a dimensionally accurate chassis that accepts a body that is as optically close to the original as possible. Given that Tavarish already owns two real Lamborghinis, it seemed unlikely that the $300 fake Lambo Fiero was going to be rebuilt as a brand new dimensionally inaccurate fake Lambo. So it was no surprise that the Fiero was destined to become instead a donor car again. The recipient of the venerable Fiero chassis? An 800 horsepower rotary engine race car replicas SLC supercar. During track use, the RCR SLC failed to negotiate a turn and impacted hard enough to crack and warp the chassis from front to back. That leaves three options. Order a new chassis from RCR, 
Have the welding Jedi build a new chassis from scratch or use a donor chassis. And for $300, it's door number three. Less than $300 really, as the Fiero motor could be sold to another builder. I hope you enjoyed this episode of the Pontiac Fiero, the Fiero kit car, and Tavares' $300 fake Lambo. If so, click that like button. Let us know that you want more of this type of episode by clicking on the subscribe button. Activating the bell icon will also make sure that you receive notifications of new episodes. Links to material related to this video, the BTM channel, the Pontiac Fiero, and Tavares' YouTube channel can be found below. Save the link to our Instagram account so you can get early updates to our channel. Links to other of our episodes can be found on the left of the video window at the end of this episode. Thanks for watching.